Now it is time to finish the job, and I will not relent in my determination to shut it down. It is not who we are. It's time to close Gitmo. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I, I have a problem with uh, Barack Obama telling us who we are. Uh, joining us now, Andy McCarthy, former federal prosecutor, of course, New York Times best-selling author, Faithless Execution, Building the Political Case for Obama's Impeachment, and columnist and senior fellow at National Review. Andy, um, yesterday he talked about uh, closing Gitmo as he continues to release those prisoners, even in the wake of terror attacks overseas and here. Uh, but what, 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 uh, what they did on Friday, his Justice Department, uh, with, um, with uh, Almari is, uh, is just uh, beyond the pale and despicable. What, explain to the folks what happened, who he is, and what, why he's now free. Well, Steve, Almari, or uh, I believe his name is Ali Saleh Almari, uh, was an al-Qaeda operative who was sent here in the aftermath or for the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks sent here directly by Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, who was then the operational kind of uh, director of terrorism operations for al-Qaeda. Uh, but his role was to be to participate in a second wave of uh, post-9-11 attacks. He is the only uh, alien who was captured in the United States and held as an enemy combatant here. Most of the other alien uh, enemy combatants have been, were uh, apprehended overseas and detained at Guantanamo Bay. That's why his case got so much attention uh, on the left. And I think really what happened on Friday when he was sent to uh, Qatar uh, as a result of uh, you know the what they're what they're calling the early termination of his sentence, uh, really the the gross error that was made here. Uh, or I, I guess malfeasance would be a better word, was really done six years ago, not now. Uh, it was six years ago that the uh, Obama administration, in its earlier days, moved him from law of war status, where he was being detained as an enemy combatant, into the civilian criminal justice system because his case was of such importance to progressives who were against the Bush-Cheney law of war approach to counterterrorism. Uh, he was moved into the civilian criminal justice and then given what I think was a very irresponsible plea deal that allowed him to plead guilty to a lesser charge. Uh, the Justice Department teed up his sentencing in a way that signaled to the court that, it, that the court should indulge a claim for additional leniency be, beyond the fact that they just gave him a lesser charge to plead to. And as a result, a guy who should have been serving life in prison got an eight-year sentence, and that's the reason he's out. A guy, a guy who uh, George Bush back in 07 said our intelligence community believes he was training in prisons, uh, uh, training in poisons at an al-Qaeda camp right. in Afghanistan. He'd been sent to the U.S. before the 9-11 attacks to serve as a sleeper agent ready to follow up with attacks. Among the potential targets, uh, we believe the al-Qaeda operative discussed were water reservoirs, the New York Stock Exchange, and U.S. military academies. Uh, and so what's the rationale? A for the plea deal, but let more. But but for letting him out early. Well, under his sentence, Steve, he got a, an eight-year sentence in 2009. So they gave him time served. Well, yeah, I, I mean, basically, the judge gave him credit for the time he'd already served, which by then was about eight years at Guantanamo Bay. But if you're talking about a guy who should have gotten life imprisonment, oh that's God. kind of uh, beside the point. Uh, I predicted in 2009, actually, when I reported on this. Uh, that he'd do about six years in jail. And sure enough, as soon as he hit the six-year mark, uh, they cut a deal with Cutter, and he's gone. Well, wait till he pardons the blind sheik before he leaves office or as he leaves office. Well, or at least transfers him to Egypt, which I believe is something the State Department has talked about with Egypt from time to time. The only silver lining we have there... Is there's a new government there that... Is uh, Egypt. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, you know, left to its own devices, if, if this government thought that that would be, you know, some kind. They talk about this moronic symbolism. I mean, they talk they'll about send them, it. They'll, Andy, they'll, right. send them, they'll send them to Iran or somewhere. Well, you know, look, there's countries. Uh, Afghanistan has in the past said that they would take him back. Uh, and I believe there are other uh, Islamist countries that would be willing. I don't think Egypt would be, which is a credit to yeah. Egypt uh, more than anything else. Listen, I, we don't have time to talk about the piece that I, I originally was going to talk to you about, uh, where you said last week the only way 
to stop Obama is to impeach him. And I, I, I want to have you back as soon as we can to talk about that because, and you started it by saying you're not going to like this, uh, and it's a shame that you had to start it uh, with that disclaimer. But uh, uh, in this climate, you, you, you knew what you had to do. And you, of course, your book makes uh, spells Thanks, out Steve. what impeachment uh, is all about. And you know what? What? What more can this man do? He's letting he's right. letting a guy out who now is going to go back and could be planning to poison our water systems or worse. Uh, yeah, anyway, it means I was right twice this week because when I said you're not going to like this, nobody did. <laughs> <laughs> you're always right, Andy. Yeah, Love yeah. you. Take care. Thank you. Take care, Steve. Carly Fiorina is next, and boy, did she give it to Valerie Jarrett. Don't go away.